Nice, a little bit of energy. The sun came out. Thank you, Sydney. We thought it was going to rain today. You never know. I moved here 17 years ago from San Francisco, and uh, I have still never figured out. It can be completely blue skies outside, and Sydney Siders grab an umbrella, and I just never figured it out because all of a sudden it rains by the end of the day. I didn't see any umbrellas this morning, so hopefully the sun's going to stay out. Welcome to Future Stack 19. I'm so excited to be here. We're so excited to host a number of customers and partners, potential customers. We have lots of staff here are really excited to see you guys today. But we can't do this without our partners. It's super important that we actually show you who we work with in the ecosystem. So thank you to Auth0, PagerDuty, and AWS. We partner with them with many of our customers, and we'd love to show you how we do that, how we give our customers success, and how they give their customers success. So if you get an opportunity during the breaks, please take a chance to be able to go out to the booths and spend some time with them. Now, we have an action-packed agenda today. I'm pretty excited because we have our entire team here. Our office is completely cleared out. And three years ago when we started, that would have been all six of us. Now we have almost 100 staff across Sydney, Melbourne, Tokyo, and even most recently Brisbane. Our keynote today is going to, is going to have some really spoiler alert, exciting announcements. Product announcements, new features, all kinds of new cool stuff because you wouldn't be here if you weren't here for cool stuff, right? The second thing is you're probably here to hear some of our customers speak. And we're even more fortunate that we were last year. This is our third future stack. We have some fantastic customer speakers here, as well as a number of our product managers to be able to share with you what we're doing uh, at New Relic. We're going to hear from Chris Fechner, Chief Digital Officer of Service New South Wales, sharing his journey around digital transformation. And if anyone's actually used Service New South Wales to be able to get a driver's license or a boating license or pay a parking fine or to actually do anything, you've realized that it's actually a great customer experience. We're proud to be able to help them do some of these things. And maybe, just maybe, in the future, they might have cool things like digital driver's licenses as well, which I heard is on the cards. We'll also hear from Ian Jamison, who's the Director of Digital Architecture at IAG sharing with us how an information, sorry, an insurance company is transforming the way they engage with their customers. After that, we're going to hear from Sean Hooper, who's a transformational architect for AWS. And we're partnering with AWS with a number of our customers. We'll share the journey that we're taking some of our customers and how working together with AWS and New Relic delivers value, and even more value for our customers and our customers' customers. And then we'll have some powerful fireside chats of which I'll be one of those, and my colleague, Jill McMurchie. We're going to hear from one of the biggest banks that's transforming the way they do business. I happen to be a customer, which is ANZ Bank. And then we're also going to hear from one of the fast-moving digital, uh, digital first companies, Afterpay, which is you know, doing things and really pushing the boundaries and moving outside of Australia into the rest of the world. And they're doing it with New Relic and a number of other partners. So we'll hear from them as well. And then following lunch, we'll split into different groups. So my advice to you is figure out where you want to be today because there's so much information uh, you can get lost if you're not paying attention. I'll, don't worry, I'll come back up and share with you where everyone can go and, and what you can learn in the afternoon. But that's not all. When you walked in, you saw that we have some amazing booths and more booths than ever this year and more staff than ever, ever this year to be able to help you. So our partner booths, obviously some folks from New Relic, um, but what's exciting for us this year is we actually have a hacker bar. And after, I won't spoiler alert, but after you see the keynote, you'll understand why in 20 minutes you can walk away with your own nerdlet. So my advice to you is if you get an opportunity, drop by the hacker bar. And last but not least, if you haven't had any New Relic swag, make sure you stop by the swag booth and pick up some swag. I'm going to show you. I actually have some pretty cool New Relic socks. Nice. nice. Now, you can get some, too, as long as you come by and say good day. And I'd also like you to spin the wheel of swag and see if you can actually win. So please take an opportunity to come by and spend some time with our staff. You'll see we have so many relics at the event today. And a big part of that is because you, as customers, have voted to choose New Relic to help you be a partner on your journey of digital transformation, moving to the cloud, and actually building perfect customer experiences. It's important for us that we know that you have choice. 
And so every person in this room from New Relic wants to help you make better decisions and give you the most value that we can by leveraging New Relic. So my request to you is speak with some of the technical folks that are here. Talk to some of the folks that are here that actually can lead you in the right direction on some of the challenges you may have in your business. Help you learn more. Help you find the right partner. The big thing that we, we emphasize in New Relic in Asia Pacific is helpfulness. And it's really important that we're helpful to you today and in every customer interaction. The way we do that is three ways. We anchor on business value, right? Technology is not just for technology's sake. It's about anchoring on business value so you actually see business with your customers. The way we differentiate from any other, any other vendor in the market is by being the best partner. We feel like if we go on a journey with you, and our customers share that with us often, when we invest and we spend time, we're able to deliver great customer experiences with our customers as a partner. And finally, the way that we do that is we do it by delivering the best platform. And you can't deliver the best platform without having an amazing CEO that cares deeply about moving the company from a monitoring company into observability. And we have the first best observability platform in the world. It's been a big year for us. The investments in customer success is all about us understanding your business so you get value out of New Relic. And what better person to articulate that value to you than our own coding CEO and founder, Mr. Lou Cerny, who I'd like to welcome to stage now. Lou, coming back to your second time to Sydney for Future Stack 19. Lou, come to the stage. Thank you. Oh, mamma mia, mamma mia. Mamma mia, let me go. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Come on, I came across the world to see you all. How are you all doing? I'm so excited to be here. Sydney, I love this city. What a beautiful city. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here um, at our third Future Stack here in Sydney. I was lucky enough to be here two years ago. It was rather epic. We had a terrific time. There was this incredible 80s rock cover band, Iron Lion, that rocked it. And I think I jumped on stage and sang a song with them. That was pretty epic. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here to announce a bunch of new software that I think is going to be transformational for all of you. So buckle up. There is an awful lot we're going to be talking about during my keynote. So much content um, that I think is just going to be amazing for you all. Um, so, so there's a lot of things we're going to be announcing and, and just be prepared for a lot of software. And the reason why we do it at New Relic, and I think probably what brings all of you here too, is somewhere at some point in our lives, certainly true for me, um, there was this moment where I fell in love with software, and I still had a love affair with software. You know, it was that moment when I discovered the joy of creating something on the computer, doing it in a way that no one else can do it. And it's so exciting to see that for those of us who see software as their craft, um, it's not just enough to build software, but the real joy comes from when that software delights your customers. And so our mission is to help you all build and deliver more perfect software. You know, imagine a world where every single time an, an application launched or loaded or a page loaded, it always did it sub-second, and there was never an error, never an outage, never a crash. I know that sounds a little aspirational. It's kind of like a hospital saying we're going to completely eradicate all disease. Um, <clears throat> but the bold mission, we're aiming that high so that, because the stakes are so high, people spend more time on the internet and using software than, than ever before, and that trend's only going to going to continue. And so if you're in the business of building and delivering software, you know that your software is your business, right? If you have a problem in your software, your business is having a problem right now. And this is complex stuff. You know, keeping these systems and running, it, it's not easy with, with the complexities of what goes on in the internet and the scale that our customers run at. And that's why what we've seen over the course of the last, well, the company's a little over 11 years old now, and over the last 11 years, when we founded the company, we had to explain to people why you needed to watch your software in production and why everything that ran in production must be measured. Well, now that's broadly known as must do, and in fact, um, over the course of the last several years, it's given rise to a term that is becoming a household name, which is observability, right? If anything that runs in production, any infrastructure, any software, any piece of the cloud, if it's running production, if it, can, if it can impact the customer experience, it must be measured in real time at a highly granular level. And so when you think about it, at the core of observability, 
there are four key types of data that you need to be collecting in massive scale in real time so that you can understand the health of your software and the customer experience. The four categories of, of, of data are metrics, dimensional metrics, events, things like when somebody logs in or when somebody presses a button on a phone. You need to collect billions of those. You need to collect logs, all those log messages. If you're having a problem, sometimes the only missing link on understanding what the cause of that problem is in a log message. And finally, traces, which span across a multitude of services so that when somebody is trying to do something in your software, seeing the end-to-end -end flow of that transaction at a highly granular level. So observability is really about bringing metrics, events, logs, and traces all to you in real time so that you can understand how your software is, is being deployed. And that's become commonplace. But what that's given rise to is an explosion of a plethora of tools. Right? Your metrics might be going into Prometheus over here. Right? Your events might be going into an events database over there. And then your, your traces could be going into Zipkin um, and your logs going into Elasticsearch. And so you've, you've got all these things in different places. And when you're in the middle of troubleshooting, you're context switching between these different tools. You know, your logs might be set in a different time window or in a different context from your metrics. And so it's very hard to troubleshoot and very expensive to manage all these tools, especially if they're on premise, right? So when I talk to customers, I inevitably hear one thing over and over again, is that you don't want more tools. You want a platform. Observability requires a platform. When I talk about a platform, I mean with a capital P, with a capital P, because a definition of a platform is something that you can build software on so that there are no edge cases that you can't address in one place. And so I'm very excited today to announce that we're delivering the world's very first observability platform, and that's called New Relic One. New Relic One, it's open, it's connected, and it's programmable. Those are the three dimensions upon which we deliver the world's best and only observability platform. And I'm gonna go into some detail on what each of those mean. So let's just talk at a high level. Open, and this is big news for us and, and, and important for you to understand because it's, it's, it's different from how you may have thought of New Relic in the past. We're fully embracing open telemetry and instrumentation APIs so that you may want to go entirely agentless with your approach and just use nothing but open APIs. And New Relic will treat that data as first class data right alongside the agent technology we collect. That's very exciting. It's connected because it's not enough to collect all this data into one place. You need to understand the relationships. You need to understand that if you have a service that's having a problem, what's it connected to? What database is it talking to? What hosts are it running on? What is the mobile application that's on the front end in the, in the, in the palm of the hand of your customer? So it's not enough to just have a bag of dashboards that don't understand context. You need to understand the connections between these entities. And your only New Relic One delivers that connected view because since the founding of our company, we started with, with the point of view of the application. And it's the application that glues all this stuff together. Right? So we've got a connected, uh, a connected platform. And third and most exciting to me and what, we're, what we are announcing today is programmable. The reason why you might have 10, 20, I, see, I routinely see large companies with 30 plus monitoring tools. Why is that? Well, it's almost always because there's some edge case that one special tool does where they present the data in a specific way. And so they've got to stand up a separate tool with its own data collection, its own management, and then it has its own user interface just to, just to solve one edge case problem. And what we believe is that <clears throat> no one platform can cover every potential use case for all of this telemetry data that, that you all collect in order to watch your application and its infrastructure. So we're opening up our platform to allow you to build applications on it using the identical technologies that we build for our products so that it can become the one place to see it all. We're going to go into detail on what this actually means later in the, in the presentation, but it's so important and so exciting, and I, I have no question in my mind that this is the future. <clears throat> but let's set some context on how we got here. If you're here today, 
you almost certainly have good familiarity with the products that you all know and love. Most of you are probably New Relic APM customers, and maybe you discovered New Relic at, at the beginning by this magical experience where you can just take one of our agents, put it inside your application, and all of a sudden it lights up and you can see what's going on inside the application. So we've done that very well for 11 years, and we're still the best at that. We cover the most languages in the most types of environments, and we pride ourselves in delivering that visibility so that you have an instant insight into your application. And from there, we added these other products that perform similar uh, capabilities going into the mobile application or the browser, added infrastructure visibility, and synthetics. And essentially what all these products share is that you, you deploy a little bit of software to gather data and send it to the New Relic cloud. And we've been doing that really well for a long time. And you all have familiarity with that. What you may not know, though, is it's not just the same cloud. Of course, you know, we built, we custom built this all to work well together, so it's seamless for you all. Was actually the identical database technology. This is a database called NRDB, and it is without question the world's most powerful telemetry database. What do I mean by that? Well, at some risk, let's see, if, let's see what NRDB is doing right now. Some of you in the front row might be able to see it. Um, so what do we have going on here? Can you kind of see those three numbers there? The top number, 17.37. That's 17 million data points per second going into NRDB right now. Every second, 17 million events data going into the NRDB. And at the moment, our customers are querying it in real time. And the reads across that are in excess of 23 billion data points per second. So when you write a query at the New Relic Cloud, 23 billion reads per second across all of that data. Mind-blowing. And the average response time is 97 milliseconds. That's an incredibly powerful database. We built the most powerful multi-tenant database for telemetry data in the world, and it's collecting all of this data from APM, so anytime, or mobile. So like, if you're launching a mobile application and you, and you press tap, okay, that's one of those 17 million events going into our database. And that data is so valuable for so many other use cases. So what we've done and what we're announcing today is that we're not just supporting all these amazing agents that you use to use New Relic today. We're also adding the support for open metrics, open telemetry, all going into the identical database. So you don't have to switch between database tools to get the power of this incredible technology. So we have open metrics, open traces, and logs all fully supported in the same database technology that's the most powerful telemetry database in the world. So that's really exciting, and I'm going to go into some detail on these three things, uh, the, the, the first three announcers of the day. Let's start with the first one, New Relic Metrics. Very exciting for us today. So we have a lot of customers that say, I love New Relic, I love the application infrastructure visibility, but I've got a lot of metrics coming from a lot of other places. Any of you using Prometheus? To watch Kubernetes, a lot of people are using Prometheus. We see a lot of that. Um, and, and so uh, Prometheus has the ability to do dimensional metrics and to gather data from virtually anything running in the environment. So it's got a very broad set of visibility. So with uh, New Relic Metrics, we have a Prometheus com compatible drop-in. We also support Open Telemetry and Drop Wizard and these other technologies that you see on the screen so that that data becomes first-class data that goes into the same platform, the same cloud as all the other data coming from our agents, so that you don't have to switch between tools to see this important telemetry. If you want an observability platform, you need to be open and support all metrics coming from all sources. Incredibly powerful stuff, incredibly affordable, and it's generally available today. So if you use Open Census, if you use Drop Wizard, if you use Prometheus, or if you just want to send us metrics through HTTP, Send it to New Relic 1, and we'll have it in that the most world's most powerful telemetry database showing live for you right now. So that's New Relic Metrics. It's super easy to get started. Let's say you're using uh, uh, Kubernetes. You just simply uh, pop in your in, uh, New Relic key there, your license key, pop it in. A few minutes later, all that telemetry is right inside New Relic 1. And then you can see it right inside our user interface along all the other beautiful visualizations we provide for you in our platform today. So that's cool. And that's the first announcement. And, and our customers love it. In fact, this is a game changer because, because when you're in the heat of battle, when you're troubleshooting, when you're trying to fix a problem, 
Context switches are expensive. You don't have time to lose concentration and reorient yourself in a new tool when you're going from one place to another. You need to have all that context ready for you. And that's what having your metrics in the same place as all the beautiful data we have today with our existing products gives you. So that's New Relic Metrics. I encourage you to give it a try. Super easy. The next one, open tracing support. New Relic traces. How many people um, are using open telemetry or open, open instrumentation for your applications? We've had a lot of customers come to us and say, I love your agents. I love putting them in my applications, but there are some microservices that I want to manually instrument myself. They might be like highly, highly granular, super high throughput, and you want a high level of control over them. And so you want to manually instrument those, but you still want the visibility that you have uh, when you drop our agent into other services. So with New Relic, we give you complete control and choice. You can either choose to manually instrument using the open source standards that are not at all New Relic specific, things like OpenTelemetry um, or Zipkin, an open source uh, offering. Um, or you can just drop in our agent and not need to change source code at all and get the benefits of that. Either or, mix and match. Other vendors either ask you to standardize on their agents alone or they ask you to manually instrument everything. And most of our customers that I talk to don't have time to manually instrument every piece of software they have. So we give you the choice. No matter how you instrument, you're going to have it all in one gorgeous unified user interface so that just simply send us the, 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 the trace data that, that you can get um, through using, uh, say, OpenTelemetry. And then there, there it is in the New Relic One UI, where it's in context with the other applications you've instrumented with our agents. So that's a big deal. Our customers have been asking for this for, for some time, and I'm really excited that we're delivering it. And the third leg of the stool. So we talked about metrics, and we talked about traces. We've supported events for a very long time in New Relic. Insights, but the final piece that we're delighted to announce today is logging. We're delighted to announce that as of today, New Relic Logs is GA, and you're going to love it. Can I get a round of applause for New Relic Logs? Come on, let me hear it. All right, I, here's why you're going to be super excited about it. It's lightning fast. That, that telemetry database I've been telling you about, you're going to see firsthand how fast it is, and how easy it is to use and manage. You'll never have to worry about indexing ever again. And your logs are going to be in context, because we have the data on, on seeing inside the application. So if you have an application problem, show just the log messages related to the problem. It's really cool, but I don't want to steal much thunder, so, because we've got the brainchild behind New Relic's logs. And he's also an Aussie, so you're going to love him. His name is Julian Juca. And Julian, why don't you come on up and tell us all about New Relic? today uh, and I am I, I mean I am exceptionally excited to be back in Sydney I'm from Sydney uh, I've been in San Francisco for the last nine years working with Lou and for eight of those years I've been a software engineer uh, at New Relic so I've got some pretty strong opinions about logging and how software should work so I am beyond excited to say uh, New Relic logs is available to everyone to use today but why talk about it when we can give you a demo so let's jump try. to it well, you need, you need you my fingerprint? In. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let's get you going. All right, and then that you want that tab. Perfect. OK. So Neuralic Logs is available to everyone to use today. Uh, is this wonderful blue little cube over in Neuralic 1. Neuralic generates around 15 terabytes of log data a day. That's neither small nor huge. We've got, we've got uh, it's a pretty you know, decent amount it's, of data. It's a decent 15 amount, right? Like it's data. decent. So I want to show you uh, how fast NRDB is, how fast New Relic Logs is. So this is our production data. This is every single bit of data that we generate from load balances to Kubernetes to Mesos to everything, our applications, our databases. I'm going to pull up every warning, because we don't have any errors, every warning <laughs> coming out of every system. Uh -huh. <laughs> See how fast that was? That was two seconds to slam across all of that data. That's mind-blowing. Isn't that amazing? So cool. And because it's in NRDB, you can facet that data, you can explore it, you can alert on it, you can visualize it. So we can see which host names are generating the most warnings. We can see which services are 
generating those warnings. And all of this data is, is malleable. You're able to jump on it, touch it, explore it. And because it's so fast, you can just dive in and see how things are going. That's wild. So this is pretty cool. And this is available for everyone to use. The thing that gets me really excited is logs in context. Yeah. So New Relic is inside all of your applications. So we, we know more than just the logs. We can do so much more than just that. So I want to show everyone the Kubernetes Explorer, which is part of New Relic 1. We're going to go and have a look at one of our Kubernetes applications. This thing is beautiful, by the way. I love these Isn't visualizations. It's cool? awesome. I can go to the pinpoint precision of a specific cluster. And now I've got these wonderful view log buttons. From a single click, I can see not only the health, the telemetry of that pod, but I can get all of the logs at a single click for that, for that one pod, for that cluster, for that namespace. There's no need to search anymore. It's just there in context. It's just there in context. New Relic logs lets you get to the why faster, right? No more yeah. search. It's the same data, yeah. but you don't need to search. So. That's awesome. Right? Come on. That's, uh, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. OK, so one more thing I really want to show any, everyone. But wait, there's more. This is my but, but wait, All there's right. more moment. Bring it home. We're tied into uh, distributed traces. We're tied into APM errors. So distributed tracing shows you the request response lifecycle. Someone puts a request in. Uh, it follows it all the way through your application and across multiple applications. This is pretty cool stuff. We've tied logging into this journey as well. So you get to see all of the logs for the request response lifecycle for a single request. So here's that distributed trace. Now I've got this wonderful C logs button. And as far as your application is concerned, this is the entirety. That's amazing. Entirety of the logs. So it's just from the start logs for that trace. That's right. So, cool. so all right, Julian, we collect 15 terabytes a day. And you found the seven messages that matter. Yep. In, in that click. few clicks. Yep. That's game changing. Who this doesn't is... want that? Come on. <laughs> right? Let's go. All right, how do people get started with so this? So, this is available to everyone today. We have a free trial, and I encourage you to send up to five terabytes a day. It's a 30 day trial. Go and kick the tires. Go and try this out right now, please. Awesome. All right, nice job, Julian. Hey, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Julian Juca. <laughs> The pride of Sydney. Thank you for coming. <laughs> awesome. So um, that's New Relic Logs, and that's New Relic becoming the open, the open observability platform, right? So if for some reason you wanted to do, send nothing but your open traces, logs, and metrics to New Relic 1, do it all yourself, we'll treat that as first-class data just as well as we treat our customers that might be using 100% agent-based where you can mix and match. Pretty mind-blowing. It's a complete observability platform. Anything with a timestamp, we can handle it better than anybody else. Anything with a timestamp, you should have in the New Relic 1 cloud. So that's the, that's the data collection portion of our platform. That's the open part. The next leg of the stool, though, is connected. Because it's not enough, as you've just seen, it's not enough that we've got all those logs coming in. It's when they're presented in context, when we see the logs in the, in the, con in the context of a trace. That connected view is what's so important that, that tr so strongly differentiates what New Relic does from other approaches that are more dashboards based, right? Because dashboards don't have context. They just present data. Um, so, so let's go into some of my favorite features that present it all in this gorgeous UI. We launched it for the first time last May. It's called New Relic One. And think of New Relic One as your new homepage for New Relic that complements the existing products we have today. So if you know and love our APM product, this isn't a replacement for APM. But when you're in a large environment, and let's say you might have three or 4,000 microservices, 10,000 uh, hosts, um, you might have a bunch of other stuff running in Amazon or in another cloud, you want one place to see it all under one roof, and then you can see your favorite entities, and you can jump through to, those, to our other products from the, from the vantage point of New Relic 1 that sits above. So New Relic 1 has been out for some time, and I strongly encourage you to make that your homepage for New Relic. It's a gorgeous UI. You saw it demoed in logs. It's also where we're going to put all of our future uh, product and feature development um, as we move forward. Um, some of my favorite things in New Relic 1, 
that you have access to today that deliver on that connected value proposition I've just been talking about are our service maps. And what's special about our service maps is that they work pan-enterprise. What do I mean by that? Well, for many of our large customers, they don't just have one New Relic account. If you're a, a large bank or a large global company, we have some customers with two, three, four hundred separate accounts, one account for a given team or a different environment. Um, and, and so that allows us to provide some, some manageability. And, and so like the people work, working on a certain part of uh, the environment, they've got their levels of controls and visibility. But sometimes you want visibility across multiple accounts, and you certainly want your maps when, when a transaction throws across different services run by different teams. You don't want to hit the barrier that a specific account can put up. If you're using on-premise software, it's, you have the same problem. You might have two Elasticsearch clusters, and you can't see data that spans across them very easily. Or you might have two instances of an on-premise APM product. New Relic 1 breaks down those silos because it's all going into one, one deployment for New Relic, and our and our service maps, for example, is something that spans across that just flawlessly. It just works, and it's magical. So we call those pan-enterprise views. We have the Kubernetes Cluster Explorer, by far the best uh, Kubernetes monitoring and visibility experience in the world. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that amazing? Just drop us in your Kubernetes environment, and you can see it in context. You can see those, those boxes around the outside are the hosts that are running the workloads, and inside there are the pods, and the red ones are the, the pods that are having trouble, and of course, we love it when people tweet about how much they love our software. Um, and, and so we put a lot of work in this Kubernetes cluster explorer, and, and the feedback on it is incredibly positive. So if you're using Kubernetes, you owe it to yourself to watch it inside New Relic. Um, and, and you get that for free if, uh, as part of um, your New Relic infrastructure uh, subscription. Um, and then the Entity Explorer, I talked a little bit about this, about how this is how you can look at across all your stuff, not only your microservices and your hosts, but all the other stuff running in, in, in Amazon, like API gateways or Lambda functions or what have you, all in one place. You can have millions of entities, all globally searchable, all in one place, so that you've got complete visibility across your enterprise. That's what we mean by an industry's uh, best and first observability platform. Um, and, and inside that are, are Lambda. So, so we, we went uh, GA with Lambda a few months ago. Customer feedback's been fantastic. Because at the end of the day, Lambda functions are code that you need to observe as, just as well as you do your, your traditional uh, microservice applications. Um, and in fact, the business case is even more important because uh, part of how you, you pay for your Lambda uh, bill is based on how long your, your functions are taking. So if you double the, the execution time of a Lambda function, you're effectively doubling your AWS bill for, that, for your serverless. <laughs> Um, and nobody likes that, so use New Relic uh, for serverless and, and see inside the performance of that function. Make it faster, reduce your AWS bill, increase your customer experience. And finally, we have incredible dashboards. Really up-leveled our dashboarding with New Relic 1. They have compatibility with the dashboard you have in Insights. But just to give you a hint, we are, the data we show is that customers who use um, our, New Relic, our, our New Relic 1 version of those dashboards have higher engagement, these dashboards are faster, they're more powerful, they're more beautiful. And so uh, this is the future of our dashboarding. So if you're not using New Relic 1 dashboards today, there's no reason not to. Um, this is where we're headed with that. And one of the things it comes with is um, a nice graphical chart builder so that, um, uh, how many of you are familiar with NRQL, which is used in Insights, right? Lots of you. It's a, an amazing query language, but for those of you who want to use point and click instead of typing a query, now the chart builder allows you to do that too, and that'll make it easier for a wider audience to, to make, take advantage of the data we collect. So that's New Relic 1. It's, it's in your hands today. I encourage you to use it. There's no additional cost for that. If you're a New Relic customer, you already have it. Just click on that little New Relic 1 logo at the top left, make it your home page. But what's coming is very soon, what we're announcing in beta today is something very exciting. We're calling, it's called New Relic AI. Smarter incident response for busy DevOps and SRE teams. New Relic AI is really a game changer for our customers because um, what we've talked to them and found over and over again is that um, our customers, you all have way too many alerts. You ever, we, we heard the term alert fatigue. Anyone heard of what alert fatigue is? Yeah, anyone have it? Yeah. It's, like, it's not like you get one alert. It's like you get a million. It's kind of like when my mother texts me. She doesn't just send me one text. And my phone like goes bing, 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 right? And you all, if you're, if, you're on, if you're carrying the pager, you get that too. 
Because let's say you're out of memory on a, on a critical host and on that is, is running a critical database that's you know, behind a critical service that's in behind another service and behind a, an end user response time. Well, those five different things that all go red, right? And so what New Relic AI does is it uses machine learning to analyze all that and collapse it down to a single event that makes sense. And this is incredibly powerful and super important because you don't want to ignore all of those messages. It's kind of like, you know, when, when, when the boy ignores the crying wolf. Um, but, but you want context and you want understanding of what they all mean. And then you want the system to say, hey, if that happens again, if these five things happen again, tell me about how, what, what happened the last time you saw these five things together so that you never have to diagnose the same problem twice. That's a big deal. We've seen it, uh, we've deployed uh, New Relic AI to a few of our largest customers. We've seen all of them realize 80 plus percent reduction in alert noise, 80 plus percent. That's just amazing to me. So it's beta as of today. So reach out to your New Relic rep, find out how you can get on the program to try out New Relic AI. Who's gonna give that a try? Y'all fired up for that? Awesome, all right, well New Relic AI beta today and it's gonna be going live soon. Um, so, let me talk about the third leg of the New Relic 1 platform, the world's first and only observability platform. And why do I say it's the only observability platform? Because, as I say, it's only a platform if you can build software on it. And explain how we came up with this idea. I'm going to take you back to um, one of my favorite events of the year. These, this, these are the new, largely the New Relic engineering team as well as some of the people in the, in the broader technical teams at New Relic. And we get together every year at an offsite and we have a conference, a technical conference, where we talk about the technology future of New Relic and what, what, what are the important um, trends that we're, we're going to adopt and, and, and learn from across the company to build the best software we can build. And I saw two presentations two years ago uh, two and a half years ago, I saw two presentations that really were very important to me and I, and, and I felt like were key strategic takeaways that we were going to make big on, the first big bets on. The first was a presentation internally at New Relic to say, at New Relic, we're going to move uh, to GraphQL as the primary query language upon which our, our product development teams are going to build our applications. Uh, how many people have familiarity with GraphQL? It's fantastic technology and, and it's made our development cycle so much easier and, and higher velocity so that you don't have to figure out what data is running in what service or how you query it. Um, GraphQL makes it super easy to find the data you're looking for. So that was one takeaway I saw. And the second takeaway I saw was a presentation that said we're also going to bet big on React and I'm making it so that um, if you're a developer building piece of software at New Relic, like, like Julian showing that logs demo, all you need to build are the React components that are related to your user interface, and it'll just snap into the New Relic U1 UI. So basically, what we came out of that offsite two years ago was we're going to use React for our presentation layer. We're going to use GraphQL for our data access layer. I thought that was super important. I was reminded about how Amazon, in the early days of AWS, they built AWS for themselves to make their developers more efficient so that they could accelerate their time to deliver infrastructure internally. And what I decided to do a little over two years ago was to say, let's not make those technologies available just for us, but let's make all of those core technologies available to all of you. So just like Amazon built AWS internally for themselves and they released it to the world, we're doing that with New Relic 1 programmability. And we're launching that today, and we're very excited about it. New Relic 1 enables you to build applications on the world's most powerful telemetry database that has live access to all of this important data. You know, anytime somebody buys something on your website, NRDB knows about it instantly. Why wait for a week to get a report on what was bought on your website? See it in real time with an application built on our platform, right? That's what we're gonna enable you to do and do it in one-tenth the cost and one-tenth the time that you'd have to do if you have to stand up a whole Redshift database and build a new schema and build a user interface and figure out how to get people to authenticate. All that's taken care of because we've built the platform that, that is designed for delivering these data applications. And now, if you can imagine it, you can build it on New Relic 1. 
So we've gone through a lot of interesting use cases and we've come up with inc some incredible examples and we're gonna show you some today because we recognize that when you introduce a new platform, it's, it's a little bit conceptual. It's like, well, what, what would I use it for? What are, you know, you need examples. And we recognize that we needed examples to show you what you can do in this platform. So what we did was we invited about uh, 20 people to Chicago, Illinois, and we had something called Future Hack. And um, we had a goal of coming out of that week with five open source applications for New Relic 1 that we could share with all of you. And we wanted them to be useful, and we wanted them to be great examples that you could clone, you could install, you could just use it, um, even if you didn't want to develop something on your own. But if you were interested in developing, you could take that code and you can modify it to do something a little different from, to suit your needs. Well, our goal was to come out with five, but we actually came out with 12. So as of today, we're not only launching the programmability, we're, launching t we're announcing 12 very powerful open source applications free for you to use on New Relic 1 that are going to dramatically improve the value you get out of the software you're already using. So I think the best way for me to explain that is to demo uh, four or five of them for you today. So would you like to see a demo of some of these open source applications that we've delivered on New Relic 1? All right, let's go to a demo. Always fun. Okay, so thank you, Julian, for that awesome logging demo. Okay, here's New Relic 1, and you can see um, I've got all these like logs here. Is, is, these, are, these are called launchers. What you see down here is there's a bunch of other launchers, many of which were actually built you know, by us, or you could build one yourself. So imagine you want to put your own application right inside New Relic 1. Well, what are some examples of things you might want to do? Well, why don't we start looking at the network? One of our engineers said, hey, I can get network telemetry data into NRDB. NRDB is really a great telemetry database, so why don't we show a nice visualization of, of our IP traffic coming into New Relic? So this is really cool. Um, we've got IP fixed data here, and we can see, for example, that this, this network path, and we can, um, we, we can show how it's performing right now and look for abnormal traffic. That might help us identify some problems when we've got some traffic issues. This is the, the traffic that's kind of external traffic coming into New Relic, and then we also have a different view for the internal traffic going on in New Relic. So you, as you can see, this is so much more powerful than a simple dashboard can do. It was pretty cool that one of our engineers could bang this out because it turns out since these are just React components, there's a ton of open source um, libraries out there that you can incorporate to put new kinds of visualizations in and to present the data in a way that's useful for you. So if you want to see your network telemetry inside New Relic 1, go ahead and clone this and try it out in your environment. This is free, free for you to try. So that's the New Relic network demo. Pretty cool, huh? Awesome. Here's another one. This one was built for one of our customers. We call it Neon. One of our customers said, look, there's so much data coming into New Relic, and it's super powerful, but sometimes I need to simplify it. It's coming into many different accounts, and I want to explain to my CIO or the senior, senior team of my, uh, in my company how this all nets out. So this is uh, a company that has, is a, um, it's a retailer, They've got retail stores around the country. They're shipping products around the country, around the US. And so they just want to simplify everything and say, OK, uh, it looks like we've got an issue with shipping in Reno, Nevada. And so here is the, the history of that and the details. Underneath all this is a bunch of complex data in, inside that NRDB database. But sometimes what you need to do is simplify. Less is more, right? So Neon allows you to simplify that and synthesize it. Prevent, present the data in a way that's more actionable, and of course, you can drill down into it from here. So that's Neon, super easy to find your own uh, dashboard if you want, um, create your own uh, Neon dashboard in your environment that's, uh, that's suited to your KPIs. So that's Neon, and that's available for you to try as well today too. So that's demo number two. All right, you ready for the third one? Anybody using containers in production, using like Docker or something like that? Okay, so this one, um, I put together, I think I was, it was a Saturday morning, my poor wife, she's just like, you know, I, I come home from a week of like, you know, 
doing the CEO stuff, but like for fun, I like to write code on weekends. So, so I, I decided to, to do something around containers, and I was imagining the thing about containers is you don't have like five or ten of them. You might have thousands, or you know, in, in our case, we've got something like twenty thousand containers in our environment. So, um, so why don't we make sense of huge numbers of containers and do a new presentation that kind of shows what are our heaviest containers by C CPU, and more importantly, and we can also show uh, memory or disk, um, but I can organize them in a variety of ways. So why don't, why don't I kind of organize them by, say, container in These are just all the tags that they're in. And then once I, uh, once I pick a particular tag, um, when I get to a, um, a small enough set, um, I can, I can um, um, like I can look at them by core count and say, all right, here are my containers where core count is 10 for some reason. So I've zoomed into a subset that is useful for me, and then when there's a small enough set, I can see all CPU memory and, and disk, and then I can pick one and say, oh, and this one's looking kind of hot. So this is a specific container, and here's what's running in it, and here's what it's doing. And because we're connected, right, and, we're, and, and we, we understand not only these da this data, but what's running on it, I can jump straight to that host, straight from there. So I can go in and look at the host. I can look at the applications running on it. So this is a great way to understand your containers, a massive environments full of containers. Visualize them in a great way. If you, if you want to go ahead and try it out, go ahead and clone it. Sorry for the bugs. It's my code. But if you want to fix it, I take PRs as well, OK? All right, so that's, uh, that's the containers. All right, you ready for one more? All right, all right, we're going to keep going on the demos. So um, here's one that uh, happens to me all the time. Um, at New Relic, um, if I go into what's called our Entity Explorer, and I talked a bit about this earlier, we at New Relic have 2,000 microservices under management. Um, we have 9,000 hosts. We got 200 mobile applications. We got a lot of stuff, so much stuff. That's impossible for any one person to understand everything and what these things do, and more importantly, who to bug if it's having a problem. So let's say I open up one of these things, and I wonder, and let's say, thankfully, it's not having a problem right now, but what if it was, and what if I needed to know, say my service depended on this, and it was red? Well, we wrote a new nerdlet that connects any service to its GitHub repository, or any mobile application or browser application. So now, when I click on GitHub repo, I see the readme, so I understand what this thing does. And more importantly, who are the people who code on it? So now I can see who are the people to bother if this has an issue. This is really valuable, right? This is about taking the power of the data we have and connecting it with the other tools you use. So super valuable. Again, free for you to install. Who's, one, who's going to put that in their New Relic environment? Highly recommend it. So now you can actually make sense of all of the stuff that you have running in production. All right, last one. This one, I saved the best for last. It was actually built here uh, in Australia. Um, Cav, are you in the room? Yes. Cav is uh, our most prolific, one of our most prolific uh, builders of, of New Relic One applications. And he went and spoke to one of our largest customers in Australia. And, and they shared with us a problem that they have that we've seen a lot of our customers have. And that is, um, they, um, they're really adopting the cloud, but their, their cloud spending is going up and up and up. And, it's, it's, and they can't understand um, where the cloud spend is going and where there are opportunities to optimize. So they, but over and over again, we're identifying people running a small workload in a big instance. And what, what Cav figured out was a way to marry that with the Amazon price list so why don't we, why don't we pick the uh, uh, Asia Pacific Sydney price list? OK. All right. And we're seeing, and we're organizing this by application, but we can organize it by cloud or instance type or New Relic account. And we see the, do the estimated dollar savings for this, by, for, by, for this environment, where you can save your money. Um, by basically right-sizing your instances. And you can have some control over this. You can say, look, I want to be a little more conservative, so I'm OK with like 30% headroom or 40% headroom. Some people might be like, no, 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 I want, I want to you know, use more of the capacity I have and set that threshold higher. So you, you control that with this slider here, and that'll change the numbers in real time, which is really cool. 
you pick a kind of middle of the road thing and in this data set we see 2.8 million of non-optimized uh, EC2 spend that if you put the right size you can save. So that's going to save you a lot of money. A lot of money. And when, when we first demoed it, the thinking was let's charge for this because um, it's so valuable and um, I decided we should be absolutely more aggressive in, in serving our customers. So what we decided instead to do was to give this away. Every one of you can run this in your environment today. If you just drop it into your New Relic 1 environment, wherever you have New Relic infrastructure deployed, it'll report on that usage and it'll tell you how you can improve your, the efficiency of your cloud spend. Who wants to use that? Isn't that awesome? All right, it's free for you to use in New Relic 1 today. All right, so those are the demos. So those were, thank you very much, those were five of, of the New Relic 1 applications. We actually have delivered 12 and growing. I hope to see many of you contribute and put, the, put them up too. If you just go to GitHub, you can find these and more. Here's another one we built in partnership with, with this great company called Split. Split is a feature flag company. It allows you to dynamically change the behavior of your software uh, with feature flags so that without needing to redeploy, you could change the behavior and say, hey, I want 10% of the customers to use feature with this feature on and the other 90% with the feature off. When you make that change, you want to make sure it's performing properly. So split being presented in New Relic 1 allows you to see the change in behavior when you turn a feature flag on. And then we even add those little red buttons to say, oh my goodness, if it introduces a terrible bug or the errors go flying off, kill it right away so that you don't have to uh, have that poor customer experience stay out there. Here's my favorite one. This is the most beautiful one. What do you think of that gorgeous UI? Isn't that beautiful? This is called Site Analyzer, and it's not actually the working software, but what's cool about it is um, one of our leaders for the browser team said, um, I wish we could just have the simple user interface on the browser data we collect to explain to a business person what's the business impact of a slow um, or a really poor customer experience. And let's explain that in terms of bounce rate and explain in terms of how long people stay on the site. So if you're a media company, you want to know if someone has like a response time of uh, uh, one and a half seconds or less, let's say, how, much, how likely are they to bounce versus customers that uh, don't meet that threshold level? So he put that down on that little scribble, and two days later, we were able to build this. Two days. That's how easy it is to build. And so this actually is incredibly valuable. We tried it with a couple of customers, and they were finding, oh my goodness, you know, the performance is having a bigger impact on my business than I thought. If we get the, and so now you need to know, you have clear data that shows what response time is good enough. If you want a bounce rate of X, then what response time you need to deliver to get that bounce rate to where you need it to be. No more speculation, use real data for that. Install this for free in your New Relic 1 account and you can find out for your site. We also built this really cool customer journeys. Think of it as a funnel on steroid. Gorgeous user interface um, and available for you to try so you can, you can slice and dice the customer journeys um, flowing through the key workflows in your site and then segment them out as you like to see. One of our customers took that idea and said, I want to marry that with business outcomes. I know that if a customer fails to purchase something, my marketing team and my business team has put a dollar value on the cost of a lost transaction. Let's put that dollar value in real time on the, um, uh, in the New Relic 1 UI. And so he built that, and, um, um, and, and now he's, that's also up in open source. So you can, you can actually present the financial impact of performance problems. I hope you're getting a better sense of how there's so much power in the data that's going into this platform, and you're only scratching the surface if all you're doing to use it is just to like, you know, debug a slow servlet. Right? We do that really well, but look at all the other stuff you can do with this platform. So we're announcing 12 of these observability applications. They're available for you today. And... Um, and uh, I, 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 I'm very curious to see what you all will build. But I'm going to do something I've never done before. It comes at some risk, but uh, I need a little encouragement for all. Can you all encourage me on this? Because um, I'm going to try coding one on the stage. All right. All right. I'm going to build a nerdlet in real time. You guys want to see how easy it is to build one of these things? All right. OK. You all see my screen? A little bigger? OK. Here's what you need to do. You need to go to New Relic 1 and get, um, go to, there's a little uh, icon that says, get started today building an application. Then you download our SDK. It's a simple command line interface. If you know React, 
you're going to be building in seconds. Let's show what you do. You get our command line. It's called nr1. And nr1 has a bunch of little commands. The one we want is nr1 create. We're going to create something new. We're going to create what's called a nerd pack. A nerd pack is just an npm package that, when deployed in New Relic 1, will run in our UI. So I'm going to create. A nerd pack, and we all know the hardest problem in computer science is naming things. So this re recommends a name. I'm going to take it. So uttermost flag it is. OK. And now it is scaffolded. So let's go inside the directory. And it's an NPM package. So if I wanted to add, you saw some of those gorgeous visualizations. Sometimes you might want to add another package. We don't need anything for this demo. But I do need to run NPM install once to, uh, to install um, my libraries. Now I'm good to go. So why don't we see what we have in here, first of all. So, so what we have in here are, th are, are essentially two directories. We've got launchers. They describe those little um, things that show up on the home page. And when you click on a launcher, it opens what we call a, is a nerdlet. And a nerdlet is just a React component. How many people have developed React before? Anyone? All right. Oh, good. Oh, good. You're all going to be building nerdlets like today. <laughs> just go out to the Hacker Lounge. You're going to love it. So. Um, so let's just um, um, let's get started here. Oh. All right, I don't like for index, so I like that indentation better. So we're going to go npm start. Now it's running. Now here is the really cool piece of magic about this. Um, I'm developing in the New Relic 1 development environment, and 99% of the stuff is hosted by New Relic. So all of that New Relic 1 stuff is, is hosted by our production environment. So I go to this URL. But I've got this little magic thing here, nerd packs equals local. What that means is that when I go to this URL, uttermost flag is now sitting on my dashboard. So that's hosted off of my laptop. And there's my code, right? So now every time I save, it's just showing up in New Relic 1. But it has instant access to all of that data that my user can see. So when I'm building the app, you're building against real data. So you can see how it looks every time you save. Let's go through an example to show you real quick. All right. So I'm going to import a chart. So New Relic 1 comes with a bunch of uh, libraries, like area chart. I'll just show you. You can find out about all of it in our New Relic 1 docs. So this is one of my favorite. Shortcuts, we've got all these cool things like drop downs and icons and all the kind of UI components you could expect, but we also have charts. So here I've got, for example, here's an area chart. And it's super easy. I can just pop that in. Let's look at what an area chart does. And I'm going to just edit the query for my demo. And I'm going to do page view. And I'm going to fast by city. And I'm going to, you're going to see why in a second, put these in the right quotes. OK. So, and I'll give it a little width and height. Uh, uh, style equals. Thank you. It's so nervous when you're coding in front of an audience. <laughs> Thank you for your encouragement. Uh, OK. And give me a little padding. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to that URL. There's my chart. Woo, magic, right? Isn't that cool? <laughs> now, if I just wanted to put a, a chart in, a, in, in the screen, I'd use a dashboard, right? I mean, there's not much point to it. But so you know, I just have a short period of time. Let's build an actual application that's interactive. So what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say, I'm going to add a text field. New Relic 1 also has a text field component. And I'm going to pop it in here. And I'm going to do things like I'm going to give it autofocus. And I'm going to give it placeholder. And why don't I give it, uh, oh, and more importantly, on change. So when the change, when the text changes, we're going to update our state. Target dot value. 
Did I? Okay. And I know it'll need a little style too. Okay. See if this works. Okay. Press save instantly. Okay. So now I've got my text field. Sorry, I could say hello. But it's not doing anything right. So here's the final pit to the demo. So now I'm going to get that text. OK, I've got the text. And I'm going to reinsert it into the query. So every time this text changed, I'm going to update the query, which will change the chart. So I'll be where user like. OK, are we ready? See if this works. OK, so let's see. Are there any people named Steve around? So if I type Steve, you see, wow, somebody in Mumbai called Steve is very active on New Relic. So that's, that's an interactive you know, Pretty cool, huh? Why don't we see? Yeah, I have this theory. If your name is Simon, you're almost certainly from England. I've almost never met someone called Simon who's not from England. So let's see. Simon, what cities are Simon from who use New Relic? Nottingham. There you go. Oh, someone in New York. He emigrated. And Rio and Berlin. And but of course, London and Tel Aviv and Barcelona. So anyway, you get the point. I now am building an application. What are the, how many lines of code is that? Let's look at it. We've got 23 lines of code. I've been able to build an application that allows you to interactively type in usernames and see their activity on the site. So think of what you can do to address your use cases. If there's something you wish you could see presented in this data where you've got the world's most powerful telemetry uh, platform, put in New Relic 1 and build your application today. Share it with your friends. OK, that's the end of that demo. Thank you for uh, supporting me through that. OK, so let's build some awesome software together. What do you need to know? You need to know React, GraphQL. You're ready to code. So we've announced a lot today. Let me remind you just some of the highlights. We've announced New Relic metrics, right? So any open dimensional metrics, we're going to treat as first class data in New Relic 1. We announced that New Relic traces, if you're using open telemetry, open APIs. If you're going agentless, we're going to treat that just as well as we treat the data coming out of our APM agents. That's a big deal. We've introduced the fastest logging in the cloud, New Relic logs, logs in context. Blindingly fast. You don't have to manage any indices. You just drop us in, and you see the logs in context. Powerful stuff. New Relic AI, reduce your alert noise by 80%. Get out of the, ha you know, the, 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 the trenches of digging through too many alerts and too many messages. Programmability, even the CEO can build stuff on it. So I'm sure all of you superstar developers can build amazing stuff on it. And to show it off, 12 very powerful applications, all open source, all free for to use. I mean, unless you like to spend twice what you need to on your cloud, um, I'm sure you could use, uh, I'll use that cloud spend analysis one as well as some of the other ones that we demoed today. A lot of stuff we're announcing. We're so thrilled for it all. And it's really all in support of delivering for you the world's first observability platform. It's open, connected, and it's programmable. And the reason why we're doing all of this is really simple. It's because we want to help you deliver more perfect software. That's what we're here to do for you, and we believe that as partners, we can help you get there. So thank you for coming. I hope you're excited as I am to, to start playing with all this new stuff. We're here to help you deliver more perfect software, and we're here to do it with you as a partner. Thank you. <laughs>